All right, iPhone camera. So I can do with what I have. So you'll see me setting you up here. Okay. Finishing off a little earlier than I would have planned to because the truck has to go into the shop a little earlier than I would have liked. Happens with this job, equipment stops working, it starts breaking down, especially during winter. Things don't like to work in the cold as much, even though I actually like winter and I like to work in the cold. You just work faster and stay warm that way. Summer, you can work slow and you're melting like ice cream. But that's just me. So, truck went in the shop because the check engine light came on and it stayed on. And the error codes are pointing to the possibility that the diesel emission filtration pump needs to be replaced. So, basically what happens is when the truck is emitting exhaust, a fluid is pumped through the exhaust system to filter out the toxic gases that come out of the tailpipe so that what actually comes out is fairly clean. So that way we get cleaner air to breathe. So the def pump needs to be replaced probably. And because the truck's going in anyway, I was going to wait until it's going in a shop. Driver's side window. If I roll it down, it doesn't come back up right away. It takes about half a minute for it to come back up. So I'm like, okay, I'll get that fixed. Then a few days ago, it was about zero degrees at night. I almost, almost got my keys stuck in the passenger side tool compartment door when I was trying to unlock it because the lock was starting to seize. And I'm like, okay, next morning I got to service the locks put WD-40 on the key, put it in the keyhole, in and out a few times to lubricate the insides. Do that every year with any locks that you have, just to keep them from seizing during the winter. Because the moisture in the air, condensation, the air moisture in the air condenses and builds up in your locks. And you don't want the water to freeze up and jam your key. So I did that service the locks on the outside of my truck but the passenger side bunk door the lock <clears throat> a little bit of dry air the lock seized well not seized it stopped working i can twist the key around no problem but it's like the locking mechanism totally disconnected so that's going to get looked at and then the fifth wheel which is the horseshoe looking thing on the back of any tractor that doesn't slide. I don't need it to slide, but it's good to have it be in a condition where it works because sometimes for weight distribution of the trailer and the truck, I need that. So we're gonna have that looked at as well. Um, so I figured now is as good a time as any to do a little tour of inside my cab. So we'll of course start with the driver's side area. Over here, we have my light control switches. So that's the off position. This is the clearance lights. So the orange lights that you see around the truck, the exterior on the sides, and especially on the top of the cab, and the headlights. It is a manual switch. So you do have to manually turn it on. It's not like the modern cars where it automatically turns on. Diesel fuel is what we take in trucks and pickup trucks diesel exhaust fluid level how much I got of course that's the fluid that pumps through the exhaust system to clean what comes out of the tailpipe so what comes out of the tailpipe is actually quite clean coolant temperature analog RPM and speedometer gauge I do have a center information cluster it gives me a few screens I usually like to keep it on my digital tachometer readout because in my personal vehicle I like to have a digital readout of my speed. Then over here we got oil pressure, underneath that we got primary and secondary air tank air pressure because we do have air brakes on these uh, trucks. And we do have lights on the back of the 
cab to illuminate what we're about to uh, in the direction we're reversing into and then of course instrument cluster lights of course camera doesn't oh there it focused now turn signal trailer brake controller so we can control the trailer brakes individually if we wanted to so if a truck has a trailer brake controller separate then we can use that if we wanted to but we just always use the regular brake pedal as you see there is no clutch pedal there's just an indentation for it it is an automatic truck so just brakes and accelerator that is what I use to adjust the center display screen twist around the knob to cycle and then go back to go back a couple of screens this is the engine brake or what they call the Jake brake so anytime especially the older trucks when they're slowing down and you hear them go bum, 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 out of the tailpipes that is the engine brake kicking in so it slows down the engine which in turn slows down the truck so you don't have to use your brakes as much and then there is the low, medium, and high setting. Uh, four ways, engine fan, if I'm climbing a steep hill, this kicks on automatically, so I find I don't have to use it. And I have cruise control, I do not use that either. I like to keep everything under manual control at all times. Suspension load, so that's how much weight is on the rear suspension of the tractor trailer brake application so whenever i use the trailer brake controller that will kick up but i only use that when i'm doing my air brake tests when i'm stopped when i'm hooking to a new trailer basic radium controller your usual climate control knobs this is my electronic logging device so my logbook, my trip information Everything work-related shows up in this computer, this tablet here. It's basically like an iPad, and I can take it out quite easily. Of course, I just got one hand, so I'm going to leave it there. Tractor air brakes and trailer air brakes. This is the light for my rear bunk. Cycle on off. Disable regen button. That's uh, if I want to reject a regen. I'll explain later what a regen is, and I never reject one anyway. Just because if you clog up that diesel particulate filter, it's basically like choking the engine. So I would not recommend rejecting a regen unless you're not in a safe spot to do so. Uh, because the exhaust can get extremely hot. So you don't want to be next to flammable materials, trees, leaves, stuff like that. So if you're parked directly beside a building, yeah, you wouldn't want to be doing that. So you would find a wide open area to do that in. Power takeoff switch. This is more so in vocational trucks where there's additional equipment that needs to run off the engines, such as, say, a dump truck and the actual dump body that lifts up and down. That requires a lot of energy and power so that needs to run off the engine which in turn runs off the transmission so you would kick it on and that will let you operate your equipment air suspension dump we do have air suspension on trucks and trailers this of course just applies to the tractor i would kick this on over here and that would lower the rear suspension that i use when i'm dropping trailers fifth wheel slide that horseshoe on the back of tractors you unlock it while hooked to a trailer, and then you can slide it forward and backward and then lock it again. Axle differential lock, if you want all four wheels to spin at the same speed, you would kick this on. This you would use only in a straight line and in muddy conditions or slippery conditions when you're losing traction and you want to get going. You do not use this in a turn especially when turning on dry pavement because all four wheels are spinning at the same speed and because they're doing so you're not really going to be able to turn on dry pavement so only in muddy and slippery conditions to get going spare switches so say if you have beacon lights or additional switches that you want to hook up to that require an on off switch you would use these they're just blanks 
I don't need them on my truck. Like I was saying earlier, I do have an automatic transmission truck, so I don't actually have a manual stick shift. And it is a 16 speed Eaton automatic transmission. I do control the gears in wet conditions when I'm going downhill. I'll drop it down a gear to help control my speed. Otherwise, I just use the automatic feature. I never use the manual or the low. Over here, I got my uh, permit stuff on the bottom. Binder, well, clipboard rather. I always joke around and say that it's the presidential football because it looks quite formal. Very handy, I keep my pens, papers in here, especially when it's raining, nothing gets wet. And we do have curtains. I have the passenger side blocked off because it is kind of sunny or was earlier. And I didn't want too much light getting in to distort the lighting. CB radio. This I recommend having, especially in winter. Because sometimes guys are going to say, brake check, brake check, slow down. And that might be just enough time for you to slow down. So it's very handy to have. I would not roll without one. So I strongly recommend anyone. You don't have a CB, get one. If it's not working, fix it. Get it fixed. Because during winter, it does come in handy. These are big vehicles we're handling. Up to 75 feet total length. With a tractor and single trailer combination. Communication is helpful and key. Uh, over here. This is the interesting part. Because this is more my house area this is my home away from home up front is the office on wheels and where the carpet starts is a no no shoe zone shoe free zone i like to keep it very clean back here on the upper bunk i do pack plenty i like to run for three weeks at a time take one week off because most guys, they run Monday to Friday, take Saturday and Sunday off. And that, that's two days off a week is not for me. It's not enough. I'd rather have one week off straight. So I just stay out three weeks at a time, so long as there's freight. And then one week off. More than enough clothes. And drink, dry goods, grocery bags, paper towels coffee cabinet I got my coffee sugar wet wipes Swiffer dusters I like to keep it very clean inside the cab because I spend so much time in here and then over here we got our climate controls for the bunk so we do have a separate heater called an ambient s-bar heater that's the elongated technical term I can control the heat settings carrier AC unit so air conditioning these Peterbilt controls they're the separate HVAC controls so that when the engine is running you could control the temperature back here separately once the engine is off you have to use either one of these two radio I do have Bluetooth alarm clock phone charger and then over here yeah coffee cabinet I mentioned that earlier here's my office related stuff well, there's some storage underneath, pens, stuff like that. Whenever I'm doing paperwork or I'm cutting up, eating dinner, seeing the view outside, I got this out. Over here, I like to keep everything very organized and symmetrical. I got my plates, utensils, electric kettle, ironing board. When I need to do dishes, everything I need to clean is there. Medicine container. So anything I would need. Tylenol, Tums, anything if I got sick, I have in here. So I don't have to go back home for anything. Uh, I got some weights. I do try to work out whenever I can. And I do keep the bubble wrap, not because I haven't used it yet, because that is true, but also... They got a nice chrome finish to them, and I want to keep it looking nice. So, uh, what else? I got my fridge over here. F 
fully stocked. I just did groceries last night. And because I'm going home, of course, all this is going with me. Some extra storage down here. I keep some books. Not like I really have any time to read them or the energy to do so. Whenever I do stop for the night, I always end up just firing up YouTube for 20 minutes, then going to bed. Because once I stop for the night, I just want some silence and eat and then go to bed. So I don't really read, but there's also some reference books as well in case I forget some stuff and I need to brush up on some technical knowledge. And then the most cozy section of all. Nice plush blankets. I have two during the winter. And then my plushy buddies, Dino and Mr. Bear. He's got a nice formal tie. You know, very formal guy. They keep watch whenever I'm not in the truck or when I'm sleeping at night. Maintain law and order on the premises. That is very important. And that's pretty much it. Microwave. If I didn't point that out already. And... Oh, inside here. I almost forgot. This is my closet area. Okay? So I got my shower bag in here. I do recommend having shower slippers. Because even though the showers look clean... I do, I'm a bit of a clean freak, so I just carry slippers with me. Because you don't know what happened in that shower before you. I take towel, my own towel, even though the truck stops provide them. And then fresh change of clothes. I do run cross-border, Canada and America. So I like to have that nice high visibility touch and it matches the slippers. So, you know, some nice symmetry there. Extra... Hygiene supplies, laundry, detergents, stuff like that. Toothbrush bag in here with toothpaste. So whenever I brush my teeth in the morning, I take this out. Do my stuff. And I pretty much think that is it. I mean, it is kind of a long video. But as you can see, I do pack plenty. I do pack more than enough because when I do go home I don't want to go back out right away and also never know there is no firm start and end time that's more so also because that's how I like to run so I always make sure I have extra so that if I'm going out for another week I got stuff and then I don't have to shop as often if I'm doing groceries for two weeks at a time, laundry for two weeks at a time. When I go home, it's usually in the middle of a week, so I have a few days extra, so I don't have to go back out again, and I'm covered. So, bit of a long video, probably more than Zorro, but if I missed anything, you guys are curious as to what else I pack in the truck, then pop a comment down below. Make sure to like the video. Come on, it's free of charge. Doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe. Shameless plug, subscribe to Rigviator. Come on, guys. And if you are a subscriber, ooh, okay, we're best buds now. All right. Uh, what else is coming up? Exterior truck tour probably will be in the near future. Um, like I said before, I do want to consult with the company as to what I can record and just put up a few more videos so they have an idea of what kind of stuff I'm putting out and then we will go from there so hope you guys liked it any questions ask me and until next time we'll see you around